I'm, I'm going to do a video soon comparing the digestive system of carnivores to herbivores. As it's the probably the best argument for a carnivore diet. Uh, logically speaking, and, and uh, you can't argue anatomy. You're going to argue stomach pH and, and small intestine and large intestine size. I accept your challenge, Frankie boy. I made a video, Are Humans Meat Eaters, some time ago, which was, you could say, quite controversial. Although the vast majority of people agreed with my views, some selective few did not. This is the follow-up to the previous one. I've realized that I've not touched upon the anatomy of the human gastrointestinal tract as much as I should or could have. Why? Because the human gastrointestinal tract is, contrary to Mr. Tufano's opinion, one of the best reasons for veganism. Here's why. Studying the gastrointestinal tract is indeed a very good method for determining our food choices. Reason being is that there's a lot that you can find out about the food by taking a look at the unit of absorption, which is our gastrointestinal tract. Basically our digestive system is the closest contact that our organism has with our environment. In most animals with spines, called vertebrae, this includes ourselves, digestion has four stages. Number one, ingestion. We place the food in our mouth. Number two, mechanical and chemical breakdown. Number three, absorption. Most nutrients are getting absorbed in the small intestine, by the way. And number four, excretion. The act of taking a shit. The goal of digestion is to break down large few molecules into smaller molecules that can be absorbed in the watery blood plasma. Have you ever realized that the gastrointestinal tract is actually a tube that is following through our body? This is one way our body prevents us from getting sick to the food that we eat. Awesome, am I right? Yes it is fam, yes it is. God damn right. Now that, now that we have the basics of digestion all clear, let's look at the data. There's one big paper published in 1980 called The Morphology of the Gastrointestinal Tract in Primates, Comparisons with Other Mammals in Relation to Diet. The paper goes as follows. While the structure of the gastrointestinal tract is fairly homogeneous among the different orders of mammals, there have been parallel developments of different parts of the gut in various evolutionary lineages. These reflect adaptations to three different foods. Animal matter, fruits and leaves. The species that prefer animal matter are called fornivores, the species that prefer fruits are called frugivores, and the species that prefer leaves are called folivores. But wait for one second. Let's give Frank the benefit of the doubt. Let's assume for a moment that we are carnivores. What should our digestive system look like? We should have a simple stomach, tortoise, small intestine, short cecum and simple smooth bald colon. We can conclude that carnivores also have shorter colons because if animals supplement their diet with fruits, they tend to have larger colons. To bring our point across, let's take a look at the digestive system of a lion. First of all, there is zero amylase in the mouth which could digest carbohydrates. Then we would have an esophagus leading into the stomach. By the way, the stomach of a lion is like 20% of their body weight. What follows is 6 to 7 meters of a small intestine, followed by a 1 meter long large intestine. The cecum of a lion is heavily compromised and reversed to allow the consumption of bone fragments. Not so in humans. On the other hand, let's take a look at the digestive system of a cow. Again, an esophagus which lands in the stomach. The stomach includes the rumen, which contains bacteria that is able to digest cellulose. The rumen is one of the key parts which enables cows to digest grass. Cows have an especially big stomach with four parts for that matter. And let's take a look at ourselves. In a human being, the digestion starts in the mouth with amylase. This is a fast way our body digests carbohydrates. It then goes to our stomach, which doesn't have a rumen, to the smaller intestine and our larger intestine containing a cecum. If we compare our digestive system with that of the cow, we realize that we're not meant to eat grass, and if you compare it to that of a lion, we realize that we're not meant to eat solely meat. I think we can all agree that we're neither full carnivores or full herbivores. So what are we then? Let's look at the coefficient of gut differentiation. Which means we take the surface area of stomach, cecum and colon and divide it by the surface area of the small intestine. The bigger the stomach and cecum and colon is in comparison to the small intestine, the higher the chance that a primate is a frugivore or a folivore. As we see in the controlled subjects, 
The primates, which are the black dots in this graph by the way, are most often found in the, in the frugivore or folivore scale. There's only one monkey, which turns out to be Cebus griseus, I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right, that is following a carnivore diet. And look how funny he looks. There are some similarities with Frank Tufana though. <laughs> anyway, there are two to three formulas where we can put our body measurements in to determine our preferred food type. One of the best ones is the relationships between the potential area for absorption and our functional body size. And if we graph Homo sapiens on this scale, we will land on the frugivore line. But here comes the big but. We're not talking about Kim Kardashian. <laughs> the but with one T being in France. What matters is not only our gastrointestinal tract, but also our behavior. Big news. <laughs> Let's look at pandas. Pandas actually have the digestive system of carnivores, yet they eat bamboos all the time. Funny, but it's true. Researchers think that's why pandas are eating almost every waking hour and are almost indifferent to reproduction. As a result, pandas spend up to 14 hours each day consuming up to 12 kilograms of leaves and stems, but digest only about 17% of it. The beers also then spend up to 12 hours each day sleeping. I think the panda is a prime example of an animal that is working against its evolutionary blueprint. Yes, the panda is surviving and quite cute, but this doesn't mean that it's thriving. If we take a look at the definition of omnivore, we have to agree that we fit that category. An omnivore is an animal that has the ability to eat and survive on both plant and animal matter. If the issue is of surviving, I think we have to agree that human beings are indeed able to survive on different diets. Surviving on different diets is important in the face of evolution, but if the question is of thriving, it's a different matter. The panda is surviving on plant matter only, yet its digestive tract is built for a different purpose. So yes, frugivore is our preferred food type, which means that about 60-80% to 80 of our calories should come from carbohydrates. I would suggest to eat 4 servings of fruits per day, combined with plenty of vegetables, nuts and whole grains. The human gastrointestinal tract displays that we are neither herbivores or carnivores. In the face of survival, we are omnivores. In the face of thriving, we are frugivores. If you like the content that I'm producing on a regular basis, please like and subscribe. Plus, if you want to get coached by me and get into your best shape on a vegan diet, visit my website qualitygains.com.